Good morning and welcome to this morning's homily at the All Saints Cathedral as we continue with our reflections on a Bible-based community. The day before yesterday, we looked at the interpretation of God's word, how we engage with scripture and how we get to understand what God's word says. And then yesterday, we looked at application when we're asking ourselves, so what do we do with God's word when we have read it, when we have understood what God was saying to his people? And this morning, we look at studying scripture in the context of small groups, leading Bible study discussions. My name is Reverend Lucas Owako, and our sign language interpreter this morning is Roslyn Njuguna. Let us start off in prayer. Our Father and our God, we are grateful that once again we have an opportunity to reflect together on how to be blessed and how to be enriched through the study of your word. We ask that as we do this, would you help us by your spirit, Heavenly Father? And Lord, would this session be fruitful for each and everyone who hears and watches it. Be thou praised and be thou honored. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. This passage of scripture is at the end of that eventful day, the morning, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit had come upon believers and, uh, and, 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 and amazing things happened and the birth of the church or the strengthening of the new church. And at the end of it, Luke, who is writing there, makes a commentary about the early church, and he says in verse 42, and they, that is the, 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 the believers in the early church, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Besides personal Bible study that uh, we have reflected a lot on since the beginning of the week and listening to sermons, Besides these two, the other way in which we take in God's word is by studying it together with other believers in small groups. We see this in the example of the early church in the passage that we have read. The temple and the synagogues were there and they would go to what would be church. But these were not enough, so they met in their homes. Every other day, the Bible actually says daily, finding opportunities to gather together, meeting other believers. And what did they gain? Four things. One is that they shared from the scriptures. They heard God speak to them. And when we meet in small group Bible study, that is one thing we seek to do, to hear God speak to us through his word. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Secondly, these believers shared real life with one another in the light of scripture. Not only did they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, but also to the fellowship, communion together, sharing life with one another, where we, we, you know, we get real with each other. How are you doing? They shared real life with one another. When we meet in small groups to study scripture, we don't just meet to only look at the page, pages of scripture and quickly answer questions. We meet also to share life with one another as we see the way God's word applies to our unique situations as believers. Thirdly, they opened their hearts together to God in worship, in song and in prayer. They devoted themselves to the fellowship and to praising God. That is worship. And finally, they reached out together to a lost world with the hope that is found in the gospel as the Lord added to the num daily 
to the number of those who are being saved. That is mission. And so these four things need to characterize the life of a community that seeks to study God's word together in small groups, hearing God speak to us, fellowshipping with one another, worshiping God as we talk to him in prayer and in songs of worship, and mission as we speak to the world and share the gospel with them. A Bible study group cannot thrive unless it has a healthy mix of these elements. You see, a Bible study group cannot be a place where people just meet, gather together to answer questions that they have seen in a Bible study guide. Sometimes I have seen situations where people just meet together, answer those questions, and go away. No, that's not it. Neither should it be a place for people to only hear brief sermonettes and homilies and depart. It should be a place for people to have real life-changing, life-engaging conversations, honest conversations about God's word. And as God's word impacts on how they live their lives. A couple of things that I want to share with us about this. One, group dynamics. When we study God's word in small groups, we need to pay attention to group dynamics and ask ourselves, what do each one of us come into the group with? These are things that a leader should pay attention to as you lead a group. But if you're a member of a group, you're not the leader, you also need to be conscious about these things. That we come with different personalities. Some are talkative, some are quiet. There are different ages. People come with different socioeconomic and cultural backgrounds. People come with different levels of spiritual maturity. People come with different spiritual conditions. You see, people and needs. People come, some are on cloud nine, walking with the Lord and feeling excited in the spirit. Some are coming who are on the verge of backsliding and giving up. We gather together to study God's word. We come with varied temporary and situational needs. One would come and they are excited, they have had a great week, and they uh, have, you know, they have had a fruitful week and they are grateful to God and just longing to burst out in songs of praise and thanksgiving. Another person would come having been beaten by the weathers in the week. They are tired, they are exhausted, they just need encouragement. Group dynamics. When people meet to study God's word together in small groups, we come and yet we are different in these many ways. How do we as leaders and as individual members manage these group dynamics? One, know and be able to preempt how people come. If, for example, I am the talkative type, then you all know that I am the talkative type and I know. Therefore, others need to be aware of that and I also need to be aware of my own personality. If I know that I can ride roughshod over others, then I manage that as we study God's word in the group. You see, the, the, the idea of studying God's word in the group is because we believe that each and every one of us can hear God speak to us. And we do hear God's word speak to us. The person who has been in the Lord for 43 years and the new believer who just got saved last week, we can all hear God speak to us through his word. And so we come expecting to hear from one another. We manage our temperaments. We create an environment that is free for people to be themselves. We don't judge people. We don't talk harshly to them. We don't, uh, you know, snuff out those who are not giving very great points because we know that we are different. We need to ensure that everyone participates, toning down the talkative ones and encouraging others to talk. Avoid tangents and unnecessary arguments as we get into the heated political season. Sometimes, you know, you are studying God's word and you're studying how Daniel, you know, stood for the Lord in the, in, in, in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. And then the thing goes on and we talk about how it is difficult to do that in our day. And quickly and quickly you can find that you have landed into the politics of the day. Now we need to ensure that we avoid unnecessary arguments and focus on God's word. When we discuss God's word in the small groups, how do we handle the discussion? Please let us remember that our Bible study groups are not for preaching, but for discussion. Even if someone was to share a homily, then there needs to be open time to discuss because I have said we believe that God speaks to each and every one of us. Three things that we need to do in that discussion. One, Observe the text. Find out the details and facts in the passage. 
I have often found it helpful when you're in a small group and when I come up with a point and you don't see it where I am getting in the text, just ask, where do you find that in the passage? Because you may realize that I am actually bringing into the study not what is in the Bible, but something that I heard from a village preacher or a street preacher somewhere, something that I saw on the internet, something that I read in a book may not necessarily be in scripture. So observe the text, read it together. Let God's word be read. Even if time is short, let us emulate the great tradition that we have in the Anglican Church. The time for the ministry of the word. We read God's word. Let God's word be heard. Secondly, interpret the text. Unlock any words or phrases that are unfamiliar, and we should have probably done that before the time of the meeting. Ideas that you don't understand. Think about what the message was, that what, as, we, as we said yesterday, that, that, that God's word was written to God's people in a particular situation. Ask yourselves, what was God speaking to them? What did he want them to do? How did he want them to respond? So interpret God's word. Then come to the application. Apply the text. Consider your present circumstances. Ask yourselves as a group, where does this word find us? That is the word of God for them in that situation. Where does this word find us? How are you? Where are you at? Find out how relevant the message of the text is to you. As we apply God's word, let us make it personal. So that when you come to the point of applying God's word, it is not a time for people in the group to say, yes, you know, you've just read about uh, the, the, the deeds of the sinful nature in Galatians chapter 5. And when it comes to application, the, the message is asking, so which of these deeds of the sinful nature is do you struggle with? And then people start answering things like, you know the church needs to be holy. No, it is about you. God's word, yes, is for the church, but it is also about you as individuals. Make it personal. Make it specific. Make it practical. When people are studying, and you've just studied up Matthew chapter 28, and you've seen the Great Commission, and the, and the application question is, what are you going to do about Jesus' Great Commission to the church? And you say uh, something like, we need to witness to everybody. You know, we, as an individual, I cannot witness to everybody. Chances are high that I will die before I go to maybe Colombia. But what, what practical thing is God's word calling on me to do? Brothers and sisters, when we study God's word in small groups, either as families in our homes or in the church small group fellowships, let us come convinced that God speaks to each and every one of us. And because he speaks to each and every one of us, we all have something that we can contribute to the building of one another. Therefore, let us come, observe God's word, let it be read. Let God's word be read among God's people. Let us interpret it and let us apply it in personal, specific, meaningful, and practical ways. As we do this, we will realize the power of God's word unleashed upon the church, unleashed in the family, unleashed in the nation, transforming and changing us to the glory of God and to the praise of his name. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we are grateful that we have heard these reflections on how to study your word how to interpret it, how to apply it. And today we have talked about the blessing of studying your word with others in small groups, in our families, in ministries, or in our cell groups in church. Help us, Heavenly Father, that as your word is unleashed in the lives of individuals, families, and small groups, may your kingdom grow, and may your name be glorified and praised. We ask this believing and trusting in Jesus' name.